Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Call Hello, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Regarder, Dash, and of course, double honors go out to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone, who deserve double honors. Salutations also go out to the fellow Akim out there on the highways and byways across the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth, all honesty, sincerity, trying to wake up the remaining hopefully late. This is Nama of the DC camp, and the subject of this video here is a woman by the name of Nora Vincent, the late Nora Vincent, I should say. And I'm only making this video because you hear all these women, these thoughts, and these feminists say that, you know, talk about male privilege and how we're supposed to have it so easy. In specific, you know, they're talking about, of course, when they say things like that, they're not taking into account the Israelite men, all right? But in any case, this doesn't matter because what this woman did here was something highly unusual. I mean, she took it all the way. So let's just go into her background. Like I said, this is the late Nora Vincent. She was born September 20th, 1968. She passed away this past summer, July 6th, 2022. So she was an American writer. She was a weekly columnist for the Los Angeles Times and a quarterly columnist on politics and culture for the National uh -oh, Gay and Lesbian News Magazine, The Advocate. She was a columnist for The Village Voice and Salon.com. Her writings appeared in The New Republic, The New York Times, New York Post, The Washington Post, and other periodicals. She gained particular attention in 2006 for her book, Self-Made Man, detailing her experiences when she lived as a man for 18 months. Yes, she did this in the same framework as reported back in the day. Uh, and the movie was made of his experience called Black Like Me, where he went undercover as a so-called black man in the South. All right, so let's go into, you know, there's her personal stats, where she went to school, all that, blah, 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 early life. She was quite privileged, all right? She uh, was born in Detroit, grew up both there and in London, where her father was employed as a lawyer for the Ford Motor Company. She attended Williams College, where she graduated with a BA in philosophy in 1990, before undertaking graduate studies at Boston College. She also worked as an editor for Free Press. All right, Self Made Man was the book. And, uh, whoops, I hit something accidentally there. Self Made Man came out in 2006, retells an 18 month experiment in the early 2000s in which she disguised herself as a man. Because of her features, it didn't you know, take much uh, to do that. This was compared to previous undercover journalism, such as Black Like Me, like I just mentioned. All right, so let's click on that and see when that was. First published in 1961 is a nonfiction book by journalist John Howard Griffin recounting his journey in the deep south of the United States at a time when African Americans lived under racial segregation. We still do. What are you talking about? Griffin was a native of Mansfield, Texas, who had his skin temporarily darkened to pass as a black man. He traveled for six weeks throughout the racially segregated states of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, and Georgia to explore life from the other side of the color line. All right. Uh, Sepia Magazine financed the project in exchange for the right to print the account first as a series of articles. And there's the book. All right. Uh, it says he kept a journal of his experiences. Blah, 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 blah. You can check that out. It says the film version of Black Like Me starring James Whitmore was produced. All right. There is the movie. Let's see, for those of you that remember it. All right. All right, let's get back to the topic of discussion here. It says, Vincent was interviewed by Juju Chang on the ABC News program 2020 and talked about the experience in Hard Talk Extra on BBC on April 21st, 2001, where she described her experiences in male-male and male-female relationships. She joined an all-male bowling club, joined a men's therapy group, went to a strip club, dated women, and used her knowledge as a lapsed Catholic to visit monks in a monastery. Vincent wrote that the only time she was ever been considered excessively feminine was during her stint as a man.
<laughs> her alter ego, Ned, was assumed to be gay on several occasions, features which had been perceived as butch when she presented as a woman were perceived as oddly effeminate when she presented as a man because you can't copy the spirit of the other sex, all right? You really can't. Someone's going to pick up on it, all right? So no matter how much surgery you have, you know, whatever you do on the outside, you cannot replace the spirit, all right? Okay? Vincent asserted that since the experiment, she had more fully realized the benefits of being female, uh-oh, and the disadvantages of being male, stating, I really like being a woman. I like it more now because I think it's more of a privilege. So where did this male privilege in a society that clearly has been geared more towards the woman, where did that shit come from? Well, it's that feminist bullshit, you know, they want it all, all right? It says, Vincent also stated that she had gained more, anyway, I already in the it says, uh, says uh, the need, they talking about, it says, um, Vincent also stated that she had gained more sympathy and understanding for men in the male condition. Men are suffering. They have different problems than women have, but they don't have it better. They need our sympathy. They need our love. And they need each other more than anything else. They need to be together. Voluntary Madness. Vincent's book, Voluntary Madness, relates her experiences as an inpatient in three, okay, it's going into her, the mental illness, which she wanted to, you know, cover there, but uh, in any case, personal life, views, and death. Vincent, a lesbian, was briefly married to, blah, 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 blah. you can read it on your own. Uh, uh, she did not believe the transgender, that she did not believe that transgender people were the sex they identified as, leading her to be accused of bigotry. See, this is all an agenda, people. This has all been an agenda. Nothing but confusion. This is indeed Babylon the Great. All right, because this has surpassed <laughs> uh, what happened in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, this is a an aggregate of all the past wicked um, civilizations, kingdoms, and this has transcended all of those in wickedness. All right, and that's prophecy. All right. Um, in an article for the Village Voice, she wrote, "Transsexuality signifies the death of the self, the soul, that good old-fashioned, indubitable, I so beloved of Descartes, whose great adage, I think, therefore I am, has become an ontological joke on the order of I tinker." And there I am. <laughs> Clearly, these people are suffering. Well, we know it as demons, but you got to understand this sort of behavior was classified as mental illness uh, up until the very early 70s, I think around 72 or 73. And then they changed it all of a sudden. You have to understand, or you have to ask rather, why was that? All right. It says, in Voluntary Madness, Vincent details her decade-long history. With, okay, well, she goes into depression and all that. And it says uh, she died by way of assisted suicide at a clinic in Switzerland at age 53. All right. So, uh, yeah, she, clearly those demons got to her. Uh, <laughs> but before she left this world, she let it be known that that shit about men having it better is a fucking joke. All right? And in Jeremiah, it tells you that there would be a time where women, where a woman, rather, would come past, all right, a man. All right, let's go there. Let's see, Jeremiah 31 and 22 says, How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? All right? And it's talking about Israel in general, but in particular it says, For the Most High, Yahweh hath created a new thing in the earth, a woman shall compass a man. And you have to understand, back in the ancient times, they put this shit, they nipped it in the bud. Think of the book of Esther. All right? With uh, Vashti. 
All right, we can go there real quick. These things were dipped in the bud, but uh, who's in rulership now? That's right. So let's start. It says the king's banquets. This is Ahasuerus. All right. So let's go there. Let's see. Strong's H325 of Persian origin. That is Ahasuerus or Artaxerxes, but in this case, Xerxes, the title rather than name of a Persian king, Ahasuerus. All right. So just to let you know who we're dealing with there. All right. So it says, uh, uh, let's see, do, 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 see how much of this I'm on. All right. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. You can read the uh, bulk of this for yourself. I'm just trying to get to the point. Uh, here it is. Verse 9. It says, also vastly, you know, this is leading up to this point here. The king, you know, set up a banquet uh, to be held and uh, things of that sort, you know, festivities, and it says, vast, also vastly, the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Azuris, Queen Vashti's refusal, all right? On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, so they'd been partying, all right, he commanded Mahaman, uh, Bista, Harbona, Bekva, and Abekva, Zethar, and Karkas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king to bring Vashti the queen before the king with a crown royal to shew the people and the princes her beauty for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men which knew the times for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment and the next Unto him was Karshina, Shathar, Admatha, Tarshish, Miras, Marsena, and Momokan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face and which set the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to the law? Because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Hasuerus by the chamberlains. And Momokan answered before the king and the princess Vashti, the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. See, nipped it in the bud because eventually these things develop a life of their own, like what we're talking about here. It's gotten way out because it's gone on for, you're looking at at least half a century now. But this was planned. This was planned. You got to understand, the target is us, Israel. How much confusion can we cause? Because Psalms 83, we have to remember now, we have to keep these people from being able to stand up on their feet again. We do not want them to become a nation again. But see, the thing is, it's happening anyway. Amos, ninth chapter, starting at 11. All right, the house of David is being built right before your eyes. There's nothing you can do. Oh, no, no. not for lack of trying. We understand that dangerous times are coming upon us. But here, this woman, clearly, before she got to the point where she took her own life, so lucky, she took her own life, she proved a point. All right, men do not have it easier, never have. All right. And until this devil is taken down, they never will. All right, because now he's trying to establish his new world order. And clearly the threat to that new world order is the nation of Israel. And he's aware of what's going on, trust you. All right, he's aware of what's going on. He studied history. All right, you damn well better believe he's on top of it. All right, but we already know his prophecy, he won't succeed. But see, he's trying to find ways around it. Can he Can he upset prophecy? That's his, that's the question there. And he's trying like hell to. He's putting all these obstacles in our 
you know, in our way, trying to constantly keep us from realizing who we are and what our true power is. The Most High's name is Yahweh, the Son's name is Yahweh Shai. You need to understand that, not God and Jesus Christ. All right? That's your Christian church. That's what was set up to keep you deaf, dumb, and blind. All right? And people have started to see that, all right? Maybe not on a larger scale, but then again, this is supposed to be a small sanctuary. Think of that. Everybody's not supposed to get it. The bulk, remember, two-thirds of Israel have got to go. They have got to go. There's no, and you're talking about not being in any redemptive qualities in Esau, uh, I'm sorry, nation of Edom, the descendants of Esau, the so-called white man. But you got to understand, it applies to th two-thirds, too. That's why they're the two-thirds. All right. So, again, we're talking about the late Nora Vincent. All right. She proved a point. The Edomite, she proved that point that this is bullshit. All right. Total bullshit. Men have it better. We live under a trying to do away with the patriarchy. See, they want it all, the greedy bitches. But this is the thing. They're not going to win. And this devil is going to leave them high and dry. And when everything falls to shit like it's, we're seeing the beginnings of that now, guess who they're going to come running to? Hey, Daniel 12 and 1 is there for a reason. Isaiah 4 and 1 is there for a reason. Wink, wink, hint. All right, so just hold fast, like the scriptures say, to what you've got. Keep that garment, all right, lest you be found naked. And I don't mean physically naked. I mean keep what you've learned inside your noggin, all right? Continue to study. Continue to pray, all right, for your brethren out there uh, in your camps uh, all over the world. And keep praying that this, hey, the end comes soon. All right, hey, so to the, to the next video, hey, Shalom.